Today we're going to take a look at AMD's infamous FX processor. The FX processors originally came out in the year 2011 and were uh, infamously known as AMD's netburst moment because they were hot, power hungry and did not perform nearly as well as the competition and even often got trounced by AMD's previous generation CPU, the Phenom 2. But in 2012, AMD released a refreshed improved version of the FX CPU and we're going to take a look at the top of the line FX CPU from the year 2012, the FX8350. Our test platform for today is the ASUS M5A99X motherboard with the FX8350 CPU which has 8 cores running between 4 and 4.2 gigahertz depending on how many cores are active. 16 gigs of DDR3 memory clocked at 1600 megahertz and the GeForce GTX 1070 video card. All our games are going to be run at the 1920 by 1080 resolution. First game is The Witcher 3 using the Ultra Graphics preset with Hairworks disabled and the very high post processing preset. So let's get on our high horse and go and do the most important thing you can do in The Witcher 3 running through the center of Novigrad, testing frame rates. In this case you can see we're getting solid 60 frames per second, about 60% CPU usage, about 60 or 70% GPU usage. So no sweat whatsoever for the AMD FX running the Witcher 3 maximum settings. Fallout 4 Ultra Graphics Quality Preset. We're right in the center of downtown Boston after nuclear apocalypse. This is basically the busiest, most demanding area of the game. And we're just walking around looking for things to shoot. So we're getting um, frame rate most in the 30s and 40s. Uh, about. 50 to 60 percent CPU usage, GPU usage about 40 percent, so uh, it's a uh, pretty playable gameplay overall. Grand Theft Auto 5, very high in ultra graphics quality settings. Let's go for a joyride, dodging some crazy drivers out there and we wrecked our car but just kidding through the magic of video game physics we're magically on the road again driving as if nothing happened so you can see we're getting frame rate mostly between 50 and 60 CPU usage about 50% GPU usage about 90% so completely playable, couple frame rate drops under 50, but for the most part, no problems whatsoever. Rise of Tomb Raider using the very high graphics preset. We're located in the geothermal valley, basically the most demanding area of the game. You can see frame rate is mostly in the 60s. Couple drops below 16 to the 50s, but for the most part it's 60s and 70s. CPU usage about 90% or more, over 90% GPU usage, so you can see our system is fairly loaded but we're still getting very smooth gameplay but just for good luck let's throw a chicken over your shoulder and look at that 100 frames per second doom ultra graphic settings and this game runs basically without breaking a sweat Solid 60 frames per second. CPU usage about 50 to 60 percent. GPU usage between 30 and 40 percent. 
and smooth 60 frames per second all the way. Deus Ex Mankind Divided Ultra Graphics Preset. Going for a little sightseeing tour of Prague. And we're getting frame rates in the 50s and 60s. About 80 to 90% CPU usage. GPU usage over 90%. In this area, there's a couple drops to the 40s, even sometimes high 30s. But for the most part, you're getting 50s and 60s frames per second. Sometimes even 70s. Don't do anything suspicious. Far Cry 5 Ultra Graphics Preset. Taking a walk through the woods, enjoying the crisp air. We've liberated the ranger station. Getting about 50s and 60s frames per second. 60 to 70% GPU usage. CPU usage mostly in the 40s and 50s. So I think we'll set up some camp and do some overclocking. Let's see what happens when we overclock the CPU to 4.6 gigahertz. Northbridge frequency to 2.4 gigahertz and the memory frequency to 1866 megahertz. And with the overclock CPU, our frame rate is now in the 60s and 70s. GPU usage is in the 70 to 80 percent. So we got a nice improvement in performance from our overclock. Deus Ex Mankind Divided with the overclock CPU. Now we're getting frame rates in the 60s and 70s. Let's keep walking along our sightseeing tour. See if we can find some more demanding areas. You see over here, frame rate drops into the 40s. But still it did not drop below 40. Like with the stock setting. So also, a nice noticeable improvement from the overclock. Rise of Tomb Raider with the overclock CPU running through Geothermal Valley. You can see the frame rate is mostly in the 70s, sometimes just below 70 to the 60s, but for the most part, 70 and 80 frames per second, sometimes even 90. Very good CPU and GPU utilization. So we will celebrate our improvement by sacrificing a chicken. And look at that. Triple digit frame rates. Very good. Fallout 4 with the overclock CPU. And you can see that now we're getting frame rate in the 40s. Sometimes drops into the 30s. But for the most part, we're getting frame rate in the 40s and 50s. Whereas before, we were getting frame rate in the 30s. So also, a very nice improvement from the overclock that should make the gameplay more enjoyable. So what kind of conclusion can we make about the AMD FX processors? Well, I would say they aged a lot better than I expected. Partially is due to the fact that newer games are better optimized to take advantage of multiple cores. And uh, that's where the strength of AMD processor lies. Is that back in 2012, you could have an eight core CPU for less than $200, which is something that was previously unheard of. And I think having a cores really paid off with time. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.